all right well good afternoon everybody we got close to 40 people here we're gonna go ahead and get started hope everybody's doing great and stuck inside on this beautiful day so far so good this year um want to welcome everybody my name is tim dutcher i'm supervisor with pools and environmental health services um, we have another supervisor that's going to take some of my burden off during the year. Her name is Hope McIntosh. So you may be dealing with her throughout the season. I want to welcome her. She's been around a couple months and getting her feet wet and everything. So welcome to Hope. And I um, want to thank Katie for putting this together. We'll have Katie run through everything, explain lots of things, and hopefully not get everybody too confused. And we'll have time for questions at the end. But if you have anything during the uh, presentation, just put it in the chat and uh, myself or Hope will do our best to answer it or get it to Katie so it can be answered properly. OK, thanks, everybody, for being here. All right, lots of familiar faces I see out there today. So thanks for attending. Um, if you all haven't met me, I'm Katie Rudisell. Um, Tim Dutcher, my supervisor, and Hope is another one of the supervisors. And then Chris, he could not be here today. Um, you all should be familiar with him. He also is, helps out, uh, does construction, and kind of does all the, the senior jobs that we do. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, hopefully this should last maybe a little bit over an hour. Um, lots of details to go into. Um, decent amount of changes this upcoming season just with VGB stuff. Uh, so I will try to touch on that as thoroughly and as easily as possible. So we'll go ahead and get started. Again, like Tim said, if you have questions, go ahead and just pop them into the chat. So what we're going to be talking about today um, is going to be just website changes, um, what's new for this upcoming season, and then stuff that we've kind of talked about in the past already, infield plan review applications. Um, make sure, please make sure too that you mute when you um, join the meeting so that we don't get feedback. Um, so we'll be doing, uh, talking about our operating permit inspections, how this season is going to look, and then also application and fee submittals moving forward. So we're going to touch on probably the most important stuff first and then kind of work our way through um, operating permit inspections uh, towards the end of the presentation. Okay, so first of all, um, our website has changed. For, for those of you that were with us last year, you'll probably notice that uh, midway through the season, our website was different. And so um, we now have a new website. So if you had it bookmarked before the MEC pools email or website address, that's no longer our website address. So um, websites here, uh, pretty much the layout's the same as what it was before. Um, lots of different links for you all to look at um, and lots of different references for you to use um, throughout the pool season. So just make sure you're booking, bookmarking that. That's where you're going to find your applications. That's where you're going to find your pool drain section compliance forms um, and any additional information you need for the permitting process. 
OK, so what's new on our website? Um, we do have a 2024 PDSC form, not a whole lot of difference um, from last year, uh, just a couple minor differences just because of what the drain cover manufacturers are requiring for um, specific types of covers. Uh, we do have a new document on there that, that um, has pool notes. It's defined as pool notes, and we'll go into that on a couple more slides up. But this document um, basically includes drain expiration dates and any permit restrictions that you have for your swimming pool. Uh, we do have updated VGB documents and pump curve documents, and infield plan review applications are also listed on there. And again, we'll go into some details on to where exactly you'll find that um, in some upcoming slides. So, First thing, biggest thing on our website that's probably new um, for you guys is a document called pool notes. Uh, we were trying to get it put onto the application, but we couldn't get it um, posted in time in order to, to attach it onto that. Um, but it'll be listed same place you find your application and it'll be listed as pool notes. And what is going to be on here is the expiration dates that we have on file for your main drains and your equalizers. And then also in that bottom little box down at the bottom of the screen, it will have any additional notes that we have for your swimming pool. So at the time this was pr pr or printed, or made available, which was at the beginning of January, that information in that box is the most current thing that we have on your swimming pool. So for example, if we were dealing with you with a pump change, it may say on there that we still need an electrical permit. So it gives you something in case you're, you're wondering if there's something that you need to follow up with your swimming pool for this upcoming season, it's listed on there. And it also gives permit restrictions for your pumps, okay? So at most pumps, Pumps nowadays that are being replaced are variable speed pumps, and we're having to put permit restrictions on yeah. almost every single one of these. So when you're looking at this pool notes, it will tell you what what RPM setting or what speed that your pump has to run at. OK, so it's, it's basically a reference for you all um, to be able to utilize in the field. And it also is something that gives you information for um, when those drain covers will expire. So if you need to change them out this upcoming season, you can jump on it ahead of time. OK. Next thing is that we're going to touch on is going to be regulation changes. Um, this is probably the biggest deal this season. Um, so we're going to go into some detail, not not delve into it like with a whole lot of detail, but some detail on what this is going to entail for everybody this season. So Virginia Grand Baker Act, um, that's the, the law governing main drains and equalizers. And this went into effect back in 2008. Uh, 2009 is when drain covers first had to be replaced. Um, and there was a, a law change um, that changed testing requirements effective May 24th of 2021, which was two years ago. But we're only just now seeing this law change start to affect um, our swimming pools in Mecklenburg. And so people were allowed to sell old product until it was no longer available on the shelf. And now this old product is no longer available. So we're now starting to see the effects of this law change and how it's affecting our swimming pools um, with having to change drain covers on any expiring drain covers. So the federal law change um, kind of easily simplified is basically based on standards. So the American Pool and Spa Association has two has multiple different standards that govern federal law when it comes to drain covers. The old standard that old drain covers were tested off of was what we refer to as APSP 2008. Okay, and the new standard that they're now being tested off of is APSP 2017. So when we talk about drain cover changes, which I'll go through in the in some upcoming slides, when I reference 2017 and 2008, it's not going to be a manufacture date. It's going to be a standard testing date for what that drain cover was tested off of. And so what this testing standard change does is it basically changes the testing requirements for the drain cover itself. OK, so you're going to have multiple different flow ratings, which we'll go to onto in the next slide. 
or after this, but I want to give a little bit of background first on what a sump is. And when I'm talking about sumps and how this pertains to drain covers and, and changing your drain covers out, that you actually know what I'm talking about. Um, so for those of you that don't have a whole lot of knowledge about the makeup of a swimming pool, when you have a swimming pool, when you're looking in the bottom of the pool, you have drains that are going to be located on the bottom of the swimming pool. And underneath those drains is a box. That is, is what we refer to as a sump, okay? And this sump can either be manufactured or it can be made in the field by whoever builds your swimming pool. And if it's a manufactured sump, it's going to look like um, just a basically what this picture looks like. It's going to be a prefabricated sump um, that has dimensions that come from the manufacturer. Something that is field built is going to be basically um, made, formed by concrete, um, or it could be something that hasn't been tested with a drain cover, but that goes in a little more detail than what you guys probably need to know. So this is just a couple examples of what you're what I'm talking about a sump. So your drain covers sit on top of these boxes that go into your pool floor. OK, so. 2008 versus 2017, you have the old way of 2008, which is for your old type of drain covers, and then you have the new way, which is the VGBA 2017 for all newly manufactured drain covers. And so what does this mean for you guys? So testing requirements, like I said, have changed on how they're testing these, these drain covers. So now you're basing tests based on diameter of suction outlet pipe, which we weren't really doing before, and then distance from the suction outlet pipe to the edge of the sump, and location of where that pipe comes in the sump. So in the past, we've always just asked you, you know, what's the distance and is that one and a half times your pipe diameter? And now it's very specific to all of these different sump specifications. So if you can look at this picture down below, this is just an example. You have an A10 Aquastar cover who has one, one has a zero sump depth, one has a three inch sump depth, and one has 5.2 sump depths. And that's gonna be measured from the pipe to the edge of the sump. And in these cases, you'll look at you look at the flow ratings and there's multiple different flow ratings for the for this drain cover based on those sump specifications and the diameters of the pipe. OK. So what does this mean for you guys as pool operators that so basically when you had a drain cover that was installed previously, it may not work on that sump any longer because it hasn't been tested to that new standard. It also means now that there are different flow ratings for each specific drain cover along with very specific sump specifications for which we're allowed to actually approve those drain covers. What worked previously may not work now based on what these new federal law requirements are, okay? So when you're looking at something like an Aquastar drain cover that's in the bottom of your pool floor, the one on the left-hand side is a 2008 version of it, okay? It has a teal dot in the center. That's how you recognize that as a 2008. And basically, you can see on there, it has two flow ratings, one for the floor and one for the wall, okay? Now, the one on the right is a VGB 2017 spec sheet. And this is all based on, like I said before, pipe sizes and sump dimensions. So rather than having two flow ratings, you now have upwards of 20 different flow ratings possible with 20 different testing um, situations for that specific drain cover. And I kind of I blew in on this so you can kind of see it a little bit better, where an inch and a half pipe through the bottom of a sump is going to have a, a flow rating of 126, where a two inch pipe is going to have a flow rating of 150. As you can see, the higher, the bigger the pipe is, the higher the flow ratings go. So we are looking at all of these different sump specifications now, and when we do approvals on the drain covers versus what it was previously. A few other drain covers we're going to go through that, that 
I just want to touch on the different changes. In case you had this specific drain cover previously, I want you to know what the new changes for the federal code require. So the, the old Hayward covers, um, which is going to be either like the 9 by 9s or the 12 by 12s, if you had those in your, your swimming pool, again, they had two flow ratings, a uh, floor rating and a wall rating. And then the RF sump installation requirements were basically that it meets this figure on the right hand side, one and a half times your pipe diameter. Check it. Yep, it works. And then we move on to the next. OK, now the new specifications and this will come with every single drain cover that you have. OK, so any dra new drain cover that you purchase should have a product data sheet that comes with it. That's going to show the flow rating It's going to show the 20 like 2017 or 2008 listing. And it'll also show the installation requirements for those drain covers on the sump. So um, 9 by 9 or 12 by 12, they've only been tested on certain pipe and there's specific flow ratings for each testing situation. The sump picture on the right hand side that I have on here is the sump specifications that your measurement of that box underneath the drain cover has to meet. OK, these are very different than what was in what was previously required by the manufacturer and federal law. For additional drain cover information, just a few side notes for this. So the old SDX2 drain cover, if you had that in your swimming pool, this was, an, it was a sumpless drain cover, which basically means that you used to be able to install it on on a, uh, the floor of the, the um, pool directly above a pipe with no sump underneath it any longer. And now that new um, SDS X2, which is the 2017, is now no longer a sumpless cover. So if you had this cover installed at your swimming pool um, and it was on a, on a sumpless, um, so the pipe would come up through the floor and it just was sitting on top of it, this drain cover will no longer work with that. Okay, it would have to, you'd have to find another drain cover to install that meets the, your pool specifications. This drain cover requires, the new 2017 requires a one inch minimum sump depth and it's only been tested with a one inch or one and a half inch, two inch, two and a half inch and three inch pipe. OK, so when we're looking at approvals, we're really looking to make sure that all of these specifications meet requirements. And it, it may be that we're asking you for additional information than what you have. You didn't have to submit on your paperwork in the past because federal law was not required. OK, waterway drain covers. This is another nine by nine and a 12 by 12 drain cover that you may see in the bottom of your swimming pool. These drain covers are very, very, very specific. So if you have this particular model number in your swimming pool, they have only been tested on one sump dimension period. And so when you go to put these in, that waterway drain cover would have to meet this exact drawing specifications that are on this screen in order for us to approve it. OK, so you'll want to make sure before you purchase drain covers for replacement that you're looking at those sump specifications that are the sump measurements that you actually have in your swimming pool before you purchase. Because what we don't want you to do is go out and purchase drain covers and then install them and we say that they don't work. If you have questions as to whether or not something works, Chris and I are here available to walk you through as much as we can on being able to try to give you recommendations on what to replace with um, and whether or not your a like for like replacement will work with your drain cover. So feel free to reach out to either one of us um, and we'll do our best to be able to help you as much as we can. OK, so as a side note, um, just to kind of throw this out here, Mecklenburg, we have over 550 pools with expiring drain covers for this season. We're coming up on the 15 year anniversary. 2024 is 15 year anniversary of um, drain cover expirations. Most drain covers have a five year expiration on them. So that is why we have so many. You will be required to replace your drain covers if they're due prior to you getting an operating permit. OK, and I will say this now and I'm going to say it again later on. The sooner you can get on this, the better we do foresee that we are going to be um, getting a lot of paperwork 
moving forward on all of this. So the sooner in the season we can get it, the better. And then we can check you off the list and get you guys open for the season. If you're waiting till the spring to get us that paperwork, there may be a delay on getting that back um, just because of the account, the amount of pools that we have with expiring drain covers this year. Um, we just foresee a lot of paperwork being put in all at one time. Okay, to assist with y'all, if you're unsure as to whether or not you have expired drain covers, there is a PDSC form report um, under the drain covers in VGB section on our website. So you'll just click on the link and any any pool that has expiring drain covers for 2024 will be on this list. So if you don't see your name, um, then you don't need to really worry about expiring drain covers. So um, double check that list. If you're not on here and you don't have expired drain covers and nothing's changed at your swimming pool, so you haven't replaced the drain covers, you haven't replaced the pump, we do not need a new PDSC form. And a PDSC form is a pool drain suction compliance form. The only time that we need that updated PDSC form is when there's been changes made for either the pump or the drain covers, okay? So for new PDSC form submittals, um, I need them, or we need them submitted on the 2024 form, okay? If you can provide a manufacturer's pump curve um, with the PDSC form, and then also the product specification sheet showing the flow ratings and the sump requirements for that specific drain cover. Um, we've gotten to a point now where we're not seeing the 2008 drain covers um, available very often. So if you're telling us it is a VGB 2008 drain cover, we're going to ask for proof of that because there's no more product of that. So just make sure that you're keeping the product spec sheets that come with the drain cover uh, and sending those in with the PDSC form and making sure you're keeping a copy for yourself also um, just in case. All right, this is just an example of the PDSC form. Y'all should be familiar with this. Um, lots of information, difficult to fill out. Lots of things you probably don't know. Um, so it's it's a lot of this is um, coming up. Some of it can you pull from your old PDSC forms. Um, if you have issues filling this out, like I said, or finding your PDSC form, feel free to reach out to Chris and I, and we can try to assist you as much as what we can. Um, this is available on our website. We can also email this um, to you guys if you are in need of it. Okay, so another thing that has changed um, for the PDSC form and what we're finding this year is with your sump measurements, because drain covers are now so very specific as to what that drain cover has to be installed on, if your sump measurements, so the box that's underneath that drain cover, if those measurements change from what it was previously, so whether that that's um, piping sizes or distances or any of that, if it changes, then we're going to need documentation of that. OK, so and for example, on this, the old PDSC form um, shows that there's six inches from the pipe to the edge of the sump and the new form, you're telling us it's eight. And so if that is different, we need you to show us with the measurements. And you can see from this picture, um, they put a tape measure on it. So when, you're, when your drain covers are being changed out, or if you're going down and you're, you're taking the drain covers off to get these measurements, and you find that they're different than what you had on file before, just make sure you're getting photograph documentation of that, because we're going to ask for it. Um, because these drain covers are so specific and the federal law requires us to, to make sure that it works with those sump dimensions, okay? So how do you get those sump dimensions? So we're going to ask you for the diameter of the suction, suction outlet pipe. So putting a tape measure on that, on that pipe, and that pipe is either going to come up through the bottom of that sump or it's going to come in the side of that sump. So you're going to measure the pipe diameter on that. Then you're going to measure the distance from the top of the suction pipe to the, to the edge of the sump. OK, and you can see on this picture, there's a level on there. They have it marked off. Um, and then the, the 
picture on the right is only required for Hayward drain covers, but it's a full sump depth, and that's going to be basically the entire depth of that sump box that's underneath your drain cover. Okay, there is a section on the PDSC form for you to provide that even if you don't have uh, a Hayward cover, if you want to provide it, but it's only required for Hayward drain covers. OK, so kind of to reiterate um, PDSC forms, any VGB paperwork needs to be submitted and approved before we're going to to schedule an inspection. So if our inspectors haven't marked that we don't have PDS a PDSC form that's been approved or you have expiring drain covers, you'll need to submit new VGB paperwork before an inspection will be scheduled. You send those forms to PDSC at mecnc.gov. Um, and then we'll get to that accordingly. Chris and I have both have access to that email address um, to be able to have um, access to those forms as they're sent in. Um, if we're verifying a PDSC form as incorrect during an inspection, so your drain covers got changed out and we didn't get notified, a return visit fee is going to be required and it's going to be a $100 return visit fee. OK. Um, Again, like I said before, due to the large quantity of pools that are expiring this year, there may be a delay in approval. So just make sure as soon as you're getting those drain covers replaced, you're sending those um, drink the PDSC forms to us. OK, um, any any drain covers that expire prior to that May 1st, 2024 need to be um, replaced prior to us scheduling an inspection. And I think we had one hand raised. Todd, did you have a question? Yes, I um, our pool drains are going to be uh, being replaced today or not today, but this year and we have Caribbean pool coming out and they're filing all the forms for us. Yes, so, we'll so that's typically some of the, uh, the pool operating companies um, will fill out the paperwork for you. So that's something the conversation that you'll need to have with whoever is replacing the drain covers for you yeah. um, and make sure that they're going to get that information for us. Most of the larger operating companies, they're well aware that they're required to have documentation. So they're yeah. they're providing that documentation when they submit it for approval. Too. Yeah, that's why I went with Caribbean because they they said they would file all that for us. So yes. All right, great. All right. <laughs> OK, so for PDSC form completion, when you're filling out a new form, um, we want all of the, the sections of that form to be complete. So if you're changing drain covers, I don't just want the drain cover information. We need to have the pump information. We need to have your skimmer information. All the sections of the form need to be filled out. OK, now make sure you're keeping a copy of your completed form, you know, just in case something happens, you know, stuff gets lost in um, email sometimes. So make sure you're keeping a copy for yourself. Um, and then any of your forms from previous years, like your last approved PDSC form, is actually available on our website. So on that new website that we have, you'll go to the little section that's a little teal box and you'll click on the, the icon that says find documents and you'll search by either name, address or um, Permit ID. Permit ID is probably the best. Um, and if you're searching by permit ID, it's going to be the six digit number that starts with a five. OK, um, and you'll type that in and it'll bring up all the documents that we have for your pool, including your applications, um, PDSC forms, pool notes. Uh, so you want it. You can use a lot. Utilize that old PDSC form to assist you in trying to fill out information if you need it for your pump, um, your equalizer information, et cetera. OK, now what we did last year is all of your PDSC forms. So if you have multiple pumping systems at, in your, at your swimming pool, say, for example, you have uh, a filtration pump, you have a waterfall pump and you have spray feature pumps. They're all now going to be in one document. So you only have to click on this one link and it'll bring up every single PDSC form that we have for every system that you have at your swimming pool. 
OK, so again, um, where to find that form. So once I click on that find document documents button, it's going to bring up this search engine in the, um, that will give you either the permit ID, the facility name, um, and you can type in your permit ID. Like I said, that's going to be the easiest way. Um, if you're typing in facility name, make sure you're using an asterisk on the front and an asterisk on the end side of it. Uh, our search engine is pretty specific, so um, less is more when you're when you're using the uh, website. So if you can't find it, um, just shoot us an email and we can try to get that for you, direct you in the right direction, make sure that it's on there um, and we'll try to get you uh, what you need. Excuse me, Katie. Yes. Um, somebody made a comment about um, paddock drain covers and what the requirements are for those and what we expect of them for paperwork wise. So if you're replacing paddock drain covers um, for any reason. The nice thing about paddock is that they are basically a lifetime cover. Um, you do have to, after seven years, replace the screws. And after 10 years, they have to be inspected yearly. We need uh, documentation. So our inspectors will look when they do your inspection. If you're at that 10 year mark, that's they are being inspected daily. Um, you can send those inspection results into our department. We can keep them on hand um, or you can keep them there in your logbook. But basically what you're looking for is making sure they're not rusted, making sure that they're secure um, and in good repair. The new Paddock 2017 drain covers, from my understanding, if you are getting having to replace for any reason, they have to be installed on a Paddock sump. They cannot be installed on any other sump besides Paddock. Okay. Hopefully that answered the question on that. Um, do we have any other questions on drain covers before I move on to a different topic? Roman, go ahead. Kate, uh, we have installed everything brand new last year, so uh, I hope I will be off the hook. Um, it was approved by you. If you haven't done anything differently, if, if everything is still the same, then you should be good for this upcoming season. We shouldn't need anything else from you, okay? Okay, just fill it out the form, send it. Just Please. We'll just need your application and the fee. So if nothing has changed from last year, we only need your application and the fee. The only time we need a new pool drain section compliance form is if you're changing a pump or is if you're changing your drain covers. And if you haven't okay. done any changes in last year, then you should be good. Uh, OK, so if if you may tell me the sad story, what is the fee? Uh, we will get into that in some future slides. Oh, okay. um, we'll right. touch on that. Yep. OK. OK, thank you. No problem. All right, so we're going to move on to infield plan review. Um, most of y'all probably are familiar with this. Uh, we started infield plan review about five years ago, uh, maybe a little bit more than that. And it's basically when um, anything changes in your equipment room, we need to be notified or and basically for pump replacements. So um, pump replacement does require approval by environmental health, which is our department. So if your pump has been replaced with a different pump, we need a new pool drain suction compliance form. We'll need an infill plan review application. And we also, you'll also need to get whoever replaced the pump to have an electrician pull an electrical permit with code enforcement. Okay. So the infill plan review um, equipment change form, and I'll show you where that's at on our website in a couple slides, um, is basically for any renovation or repair work that's done to your pump room. So the main time we see this is usually with pump changes. Sometimes we get them for filter changes. Um, you can be used for renovation of piping if you're redoing the pump room. Um, and then so basically anything changing in your equipment room um, that is different from original plan approval. The pumps are the biggest thing. When a pool goes through plan approval at the very beginning when the pool was originally built, everything in that pump room in the whole design of your swimming pool is based on your pump. And so when you change your pump, you, we have to make sure that that new pump still works with everything that is currently in place at your swimming pool. So that's what this form allows us to do is to be able to run numbers to verify that that pump works with everything that's in your equipment room. Okay. 
Now we do have a general form that's used for re renovation and repair work that's outside of the equipment room. So if you're installing fencing, um, renovating a pool deck, renovating clubhouse, leasing um, office restrooms, uh, you'll need to submit this general form because we do need to do a site visit to verify that any of those renovations are brought up to current code. Um, for pool plaster, the only time you really need to was submit for that is if you're going with a darker color plaster um, because there is a light reflectance value that we do permit. Um, so if you're choosing a non-white plaster, that needs to be um, cleared by our department first. Okay. So where did you find these forms? So same place is, is going to be on our website. OK, so you're going to go to our new website. You're going to go to public pool construction, and then it's going to be listed as infield plan review, plan review equipment. Uh, yep, infield plan review, plan review equipment. So um, you'll click on that link and it'll bring up the equipment infield plan review um, application. And then the one right under that is going to be the general form for fencing um, and any decking uh, replacement that you're going to be doing. We do ask that you, if you're replacing pumps or you're doing any renovation to the fencing, that you submit these applications ahead of time. Because what we're trying to do is prevent you all from having to spend extra money um, by installing something that doesn't work with what our regulations require. So if we get that application in on the front side, um, that way we can take a look at it and let you know if we see any issues before you start the process of replacement of whatever the, the scope of work you're doing there at your swimming pool. Um, as a side note, if you are replacing your fence, um, this does require permits from building. Um, so code enforcement requires that it's looked flat. So the, the fence has to meet North Carolina swimming pool regulations, and it also has to meet code enforcement regulations. Um, it depends on electrical permit may be required. Uh, it just really depends on the scope of work of when you're what you're replacing at your fence. So if you're replacing something like a key fob system on a new gate, that may require an electrical permit. If it's just the barrier itself, then it's probably just going to be a building permit. But when you go to get a contractor to wh whoever is going to replace your fence, make sure that they're aware that they need to pull permits, okay? Because what we don't want is you to replace your fence and we get to the final point where we do the inspection, no permits have been pulled, and then your fence contractor has to get back involved and it's gonna delay the final um, sign off on the, on the new barrier because the proper permits were not pulled, okay? So how that works, building code will have to go out to do an inspection and environmental health will have to go out and do an inspection to make sure this the new barrier meets code requirements. Now there is a $250 uh, infield plan review fee that may or may not be um, charged, okay? It really depends on the scope of work. Uh, in a pump room, if it's a simple sump pump replacement and a seasonal staff member can verify all the things that we need in the field, most of the time we do not charge for that. Um, it's something that our inspectors do during their inspections. Uh, if the pump room is more complicated um, and it does require a visit by a senior, there's probably going to be a fee involved with that. For fencing, um, for deck renovation, those will have fees involved with that. So. You'll submit an application um, for approval before the work occurs, and then just make sure um, if you're not sure on whether or not you need to submit an infield plan review application, feel free to reach out to Chris or myself. Our contact information will be on the last slide um, for you all to, to reach out to, and um, we can answer your questions as to whether or not you need to submit paperwork or not. Okay. For electrical, um, for pump and motor changes, and there's always been always confusion on this. So when your pump goes, if your pump goes and you have to replace the entire pump, OK, we need an electrical permit for that. And that needs to be inspected by code enforcement. Um, if the pump is different from what you had there previously. So let me let me kind of rephrase that. So if the pump goes and you have to you can't find the same model number of whatever it is that you had there previously and you have to put in a new pump that has to have an inspection done by code enforcement with electrical permit and that needs to be approved by environmental health too if you're replacing a like for like or a motor 
then you just need an electrical permit. That does not, if it's a like for like or a motor, that does not need to be approved by our department. It's only if you're changing that pump to something different. We require electrical permits for all of it, but it only needs to be approved by environmental health when it's a completely different pump. Okay, uh, code enforcement, the, the electrician who installed the pump will need to pull that electrical permit and they'll be the ones that call in for the inspection to get that finaled out. Before environmental health will approve a brand new pump, it has to be finaled by code enforcement and it has to be signed off by them before we'll do our final sign off on it. All right, so for 2024 operating season, um, nothing crazy uh, changing with this upcoming season. Um, all again, like it was last year, all seasonal and annual pools, they have to have an inspection done prior to getting their operating permit. We're going to be doing a state permit and a local permit, just like we've done in the past. Uh, for seasonal pools, your state permit will be given to you on site. Your local permit will also be given to you on site. Your local permit, which is a sticker, needs to be posted visible upon entry to the swimming pool. Your state permit, you can just kind of keep in a file. Um, for our annual pools, if your inspection was done prior to April 1 and you're on good standing status, you'll get a, a sticker mailed to you um, and your permit will be placed on our website. Your state permit will be placed on our website. OK, um, like I said, local permit needs to be posted visible upon entry to your swimming pool. Um, for those of you who have not been through the um, inspection process yet, we do have permit checklists um, available on our website for swimming pools, wading pools, spas, and water recreation attractions. So you can go through as a manager and print this off and make sure that everything on this checklist is correct prior to scheduling your inspection uh, with your inspector. It's also available in Spanish on our website, so if you need that as a reference, um, you can utilize that also. It looks like, Patrick, did you have a question? Uh, yes, so um, I'm on a new property now, and so on the previous one, we would have our local permit posted on a window leading into the pool deck. Mm -hmm. uh, however, this one has a uh, gated pool deck that is uh, not attached to any indoor windows, and I believe I recall that the uh, the stickers themselves are to be posted on a kind of window if it is. Um, is there a way to mount those outdoors without the weather taking them down? If you stick them on one of your pool signs, typically they don't have a tendency of coming off. So just make sure you're cleaning the sign first um, and then you can just apply it to the pool sign, like the pool rule sign. Um, and they typically they stay on there pretty good. Some of our pools just they stick them one on top of each other. They've had them there for probably 10 years or more. Um, so try that. Uh, and I don't think you, you should have an issue with it. OK, gotcha. All right. So just a couple side notes um, for pool barriers. We get questions on this every year. Um, if you have a courtyard pool, OK, that you have doors leading out onto um, your pool deck. So whether or not that's from a leasing office, a clubhouse, pool restrooms, anywhere where that the, the public has access points on the other side of that door, uh, those doors need to self-close and self-latch or self-close with an audible alarm. Our inspectors need to verify that during the inspections. So make sure if you have a door that leads out on your pool deck or a gate for that matter, and you're keeping them closed or locked, that you have the keys to be able to open them up for the inspection. If they don't have access, they're going to have to come back to verify that that door or that gate self-closes, self-latches. And the reason being, um, we're only seeing these pools once, maybe twice a year. We want to make sure that at all times, when we're once we issue that operating permit, that all the the, the uh, entry points onto that swimming pool area meet our code specifications. You can keep them locked the rest of the year, but they just need we need to have access for that operating permit inspection. All right, so for 2024 permitting, um, what is the process going to look like? We are making a change to our annual permits this year. Um, the expiration for an annual permit is April 30th. We're going to be extending that to May 31st, and this is going to be moving forward through the rest of the season. This does not really mean anything for you guys as an annual permit. Um, 
in general for what you need to do. It's something that we're doing on our side of things to be able to give our inspectors a little bit more time to do inspections. Uh, for those of our those of you that are annual, um, we will be sending out a mailer to let you know what that's going to look like. But basically, you're going to get a temporary permit for that one month period that will extend your permit through that the rest of the season. There's not going to be any changes in fees for anybody. Um, it's going to be the same fee for an annual permit. It's just the date's going to change, like I said before, in order to be able to give our inspectors a little bit more time to do inspections. OK, so for um, seasonal and annual, like we said, requires a permit inspection. The first day to complete a scheduled permit inspection for a seasonal pool is Monday, April 1st. OK, that's the earliest that you're going to be able to do an inspection to get your operating permit to be able to open. Now, annual pools, because they're a year round, um, our annual inspectors are currently working on the inspections right now. Um, so if you are on good standing status, which means that you've had an inspection, you don't have any intent to suspends or immediate suspensions, you're on active status prior to May 1st, you will be automatically given an operating permit, okay? Um, you'll be either uh, mailed your sticker, depending upon when your inspection, or if it's after April 1st by annuals, you'll be handed that sticker while your inspector completes their inspection. Uh, but you have to be on good acting status in order for us to automatically issue those annual permits. Uh, a list of, of your inspectors will be on our website uh, mid-March, okay? So we're talking probably the third week of March is when we're going to list our um, inspectors on our website. Uh, it's going to be the same place where your applications are, and it's going to be listed as the inspector assignment list, okay? It's grayed out right now. You'll see it on our website now, um, so you can't click on it just yet. And this is actually going to have your annual pool inspectors too. So if you haven't had an inspection and you have a year-round swimming pool permit by April 1st I would recommend reaching out to your inspector just kind of touching base with them if you're an annual pool and saying hey you know just wondering when we're going to get our inspection done if it's coming up on April 1st or a little bit later because of that May 1st deadline we do allow um them to, to schedule those inspections for annual pools um, just because they have such a large quantity in that one month period that are all trying to get open. So that inspector will be on our website for you to reach out to after April 1 um, if you want to schedule your an annual inspection. Uh, state permit inspections, these are going to be done as they've always been done in the past, so no real changes with this, like a pre-permit inspection. So all the items on that permit checklist that I wrote, I mentioned earlier should be correct before you schedule an inspection with your inspector. If any of those items are not correct, there's a $100 return visit fee that will be charged, okay? Um, like I said, just make sure you're utilizing those permit checklists uh, found on our website in order to make sure um, this is, if this is the first time you're going through an inspection process, all those items are correct on there before scheduling with your inspector. Just an example of what our state operating permit looks like. Um, these are posted on our website. And again, you'll be given this when you're um, for our seasonal pool inspections uh, as they finish up their inspection. So if you need a copy of it, you lose it for some reason, feel free to reach out to us or they're available on our website for you to print off. Another example of what the permit stickers are going to look like. Not sure what the color is going to be this year, um, but there'll be a certain color, so you'll just need to have that posted. Different dates for your annuals and your seasonal swimming pools. Annual swimming pools are from May 1st through April 30th of the next year, and then seasonals are going to start April 1st through October 31st. That's the this time span of those permits. To touch on real quick, um, Mecklenburg County does have a local ordinance, uh, a lifeguard ordinance. What this entails is basically for pools that are greater than five feet that are not a hotel apartment or condo. So we're talking like a swim club, a swim facility that is more than five feet. They are required to have a lifeguard per our local ordinance. OK, so. If you're more than five feet, um, you need to ensure that you do provide lifeguards to your pool unless we have granted you a variance, okay? And that variance um, request 
that form, there's a form on our website that you'll need to print out and fill out. And basically the variance request uh, will give reason as to why you believe that you do not require a lifeguard at your swimming pool. Once you fill out this variance request, it can be sent to Tim or Hope. They'll review it to make sure everything is, is filled out properly, and they'll send it up the food chain um, to see if we, we can do an approval on that or not. If you were approved previously for a variance, it will be, our inspectors know that, it's in their field books that they get um, with your pool information on it, and it will actually be in that pool notes section on that pool note document, um, whether or not you have a lifeguard variance or not, okay? Um, if once we get that variance request, um, we will follow up with you to let you know whether or not it's been approved or not. So, um, and like I said, uh, it should be in our pool notes as to whether or not you currently have one. So if you think you, you do, please double check that um, just to make sure. So 2024 application and fee submittal. Um, the portal for the applications to be able to find that same place that you're going to find your PDSC forms. Um, so you just click on the little that red document that said find document or that red button and it'll bring up the search engine. Again, like I said before, permit number is going to be the easiest um, way to be able to look something up. Every permit that you'll see starts with a 2060. You can disregard that and just go with the six digit number that starts with five. So we say it'll be five zero, five three, five two, um, and then you just type in that permit number and it should bring up all the information that we have on there. If again, like you don't have your permit ID number and you're using a facility name, less is more for that. So in this example here, if you were to be looking up your pool as comfort suites, um, if you put in an asterisk comfort, another asterisk, it's going to bring up every single pool that we have that has comfort in the name. OK, so again, like I said, if you can't find it, let us know. We can direct you in that right direction on where to find that. For your application, so once you find your application and you get it on your website or you pull it up, make you want to review it. Unfortunately, we have not got to the point where we can go electronic submittal with this and you can just update it and updates it automatically into our system. We're having to hand update all of these, so make sure you're reviewing it. The information that we get off of this application is what we use for public e outreach for you guys. So email addresses, phone numbers, all of that is what, that's how we got this information out for you for our pool operator meeting. So ma make sure that you're reviewing it, striking through, writing in. If you're just utilizing uh, like a, a sticker of some sort or updating it through Adobe PDF, make sure that you're highlighting it so that we know that there was a change made. So that when we go, when we get the application in, we can go ahead and adjust those and make the changes that we need through that okay, for that. The um, this year is a leap year, so you do have an extra day to be able to get applications in. Typically, our date is February 28th. This year, it's Thursday, February 29th. So applications need to be in and processed to our office by 5 p.m. on the 29th. Otherwise, there will be a late fee charged. OK. Uh, permit fees will stay the same. Seasonal is going to be 130. Annual is going to be 250. The late fee hasn't changed either. Um, it's $120 per each pool. So if you have a swimming pool and a spa and you're late on both of them, it's going to be an additional $240. It's $120 for each. Okay. So Thursday, February 29th is when we need that, those payments. Um, the return visit fee this year is still $100, same as it's always been in the past. For your application, the invoice that's on our website um, is available for those that need that to get checks um, made out to our department. The invoice does not need to be submitted with the application. Um, this is really just for y'all's reference um, if you need it to get a bill paid. Um, and if you need a W-9, uh, you can contact Sabrina Davis in order to be able to get that. And her phone number is um, 980-314-2959. So again, like I said, invoices don't need to be submitted with the application. We just need the application and the fee application with the updates um, for uh, any changes that we have. All right, so how to pay. Um, you can mail the check. 
uh, to Freedom Drive address. If you are coming to our office to pay, our office is not easy to find. So um, if you're familiar with Valerie Woodard Center, um, you have Ashley Road and you have Freedom Drive. Uh, the main entrance to our facility is off of Ashley Road, but our department is not on the front side of the building. You're gonna have to make your way around to the back we're way on the back side, back by the fence. So um, we do have a little button call box out front if you decide to bring your payment in, um, but you'll need to go to the back of our building in order to be able to do that. You can make a payment over the phone by credit card. Um, so if you're submitting the if you're submitting an application and want to do by credit card, we need the application before you call to make a payment. We have to have the application on hand um, and you can either submit that through fax. Uh, you can email it to that MEC pools email address. And if you want, you can actually provide your contact information and our front office will reach out to get payment from you. Uh, they get very, very busy uh, come the spring and so when you call or if you call you may or may not be able to get through uh, so you can leave a message and they'll call you back or you can just email it and have them reach out to get a payment from you once they get a bit a little bit of time to be able to process that if your application is coming in separate from your payment um, if you're sending the application in um, for credit card or if you're sending it in by check and it's coming in, in two different one application and the, the check separate Please make sure that you're writing the permit ID on the bottom of the check um, and also that you're writing on the application how you were going to be paying. OK, so if you have a check that or an application that's sent in to the MEC pools email address and you're going to be sending a check in through the mail, just make sure that you're putting in that email or on the application that the check will be submitted separately. So that way our front office staff knows how to process it. OK. So a couple more topics and we'll we'll close up here. Like I said, it's probably going to be about an hour or so. Um, so night swimming approvals and what this means for you all. So if your pool is seeking night swimming, um, we have to make and I say we and our, your inspector needs to make a site visit before dawn or after dusk to make sure that there's sufficient light provided. There is no definition for sufficient lighting in our rules. Um, we used to have it listed as 10 foot candles, but they changed that requirement probably about five years ago. So what we're looking for on a night swimming visit is that we can see all the interior parts of your swimming pool and that we can see all the areas of your pool deck. And that's going to include all walkway paths, all your safety equipment, your emergency phone, your signage, um, anything that the public would need to be able to see to be able to exit in case of an emergency. We have to be able to see that in order for us to permit for night swimming. And a night swimming inspection does not have to occur at the same time as your permit inspection. You can schedule that separately, okay? Uh, that night swimming inspection, we can issue the operating permit uh, on one day and then say, you know, a week or two later, you decide you want night swimming, then we can we can do a follow up inspection to do that night swimming approval. OK, um, you're going to see on the bottom of the permit whether or not a pool has been approved for night swimming or not. Um, and then as we'll go back to this real quick, if you've had night swimming approvals in the past, um, we can approve off of previous of approvals as long as that approval was done within the last three years. So if you are approved for night swimming, you will have a night swimming documentation form that's actually on our website where your PDSC form and your pool notes are. Uh, and it'll list it on the permit that we give to you, but it'll also be in our inspector's field book. So if you know that you're seeking night swimming, um, you can reference, and you've had it permitted in the past, um, you can reference that night swimming form Form that's on our website and there's a drawing on there that basically shows all the lights that were operable when we did the night swimming visit and so that way you can verify that those lights are still operable moving forward to get in order to get a night swimming inspection done um, and approval for this upcoming season. All right, just some pool maintenance reminders. I have to say this every year um, and I know some of you will probably laugh at this, but uh, please do not hand feed chlorine into your swimming pool unless you are shocking your swimming pool. 
Every single year, our inspectors go out to do inspections and they will open a skimmer basket and there will be chlorine pucks in it. Um, it's a hazard to them and it's a hazard to the public. So you can shock your pool. Um, but and when I say shock, that means just broadcasting chlorine or putting pucks in your skimmer baskets when the pool is closed to the public or if you're treating it for some reason, say you have an algae bloom, um, you had a fecal um, issue, then then in that case using chlorine to shock your pool is fine. What we don't want is you to be chlorinating your swimming pool through shock or through leaving um, chlorine tabs in your sp swimming pool. If our inspectors go out to do an inspection and there are chlorine pucks being used in the swimming pool or you've just shocked it, we can't issue an operating permit. We have to verify that the chlorinator is working correctly and we can't do that if you're if you're chlorinating through pucks. Okay, so we're going to have to deny a permit if we see chlorine pucks in your skimmer baskets or chlorine being broadcasted on top of the swimming pool. Um, another reminder, we do have an, ins an inspection video that yours truly is is the head of here. So um, I, th we, I think we did this probably about, I don't know, six or seven years ago, uh, went through and kind of walked through how to do an inspection. So if you have questions and you've never been through an inspection process with Mecklenburg County, this is how we do inspection here. So you can watch this video. It's not too long um, and it gives you an idea of what we're looking for during the inspection. And this link, I think, is towards the bottom of our website um, listed as pool inspection video. Now, I will say, too, these slides and this presentation are going to be available on our website. So all these links will be on those slides. Um, it'll probably be up by the end of this week. I'll send it off um, most likely at the end of the day today or tomorrow to get uploaded. So if you need these slides for any reason or you want to go back and use this presentation as a reference, it will be posted on our website. So just some dates to remember to wrap up. Um, we got February 29th is going to be the last day to submit your permit fee without paying a late penalty. Mid-March is when you can start in, um, contacting your inspectors to schedule an inspection. Um, it's going to probably be the third week of March that we get those inspection ter or inspector territories posted. April 1st is going to be the first day that you can schedule a, a seasonal pool inspection for your pre-permit inspections. And May 1st will be the start of the annual swimming pool season for this upcoming season. And last but not least, our contact information. Now the QR code here on the right si side is we do have a survey, um, not for this presentation, but it's just a, a survey about how our department is doing um, the swimming pool program and our tattoo program, actually. We're all the same program. So we, we do request that if you can, if you have time to scan this QR code, um, fill out a survey. I think it's open for the next month. Um, just let us know how we're doing. We always like feedback. Um, it makes us for a better program. So I will open this up for any questions. If we had any in the chat that Tim had, or if you guys have any questions, just raise your hand. Um, hopefully we answered everybody's questions, but you never know. So, and I'll pass it back over to Tim to do the final sign off, if not. Hi, um, I, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, sorry. I've been trying to get into the meeting for the past hour, <laughs> um, but for some reason the uh, Microsoft Teams wasn't working for me. Um, uh, I just, I, I missed most of it, of course. Um, will this be, um, will there be a recording of it somewhere that I can um, access? Yeah, it's going to be, we recorded it um, and it will be on our website within the next couple of days. Okay, perfect. Um, one question that I had, and I'm sorry if this is something that's already been asked. Um, my, uh, the board that I work for, um, they're interested in resurfacing the pool. Um, and they're wondering um, what are the acceptable colors? Is there only two colors that are acceptable? That's That was their understanding. So, Pool plaster is based on what we call a light reflectance value, um, and that comes yeah. from the manufacturer. So there are multiple different 
colors of white that you can use, um, but you'll want to verify that the pool plaster color reflects more than 50% of light. So um, you'll be able to get that from the manufacturer, but if you have questions about it, once you guys figure out what, what you're going to be using, um, feel free to reach out. My, my contact information is on here, and we can talk about it specifically for your swimming pool. Okay, um, your uh we're uh because i had to sign in through the phone only because the teams wasn't working um i'm sorry who am i speaking with <laughs> this is katie ruta so all this um, oh it is so, katie oh i've yeah. emailed you yeah yeah so okay, uh, from do you have access okay. to the chat uh i don't i yeah i can't okay. i couldn't get into any of it for some reason I don't know so it'll be on the slides that we um, that we post up on our website. So all my contact information is on the last slide of the presentation. Okay, cool. I will um, send you that email then. Thank you. All right, sounds good. Does anybody else have any other questions? Don't be shy. Come on. <laughs> I'm digging the beard, Tim. Thank you very much. Been Good looking hard at it. It looks like Roman may have one more question. Yeah, Kate, uh, can you specify what is the, uh, because we have a problem with the uh, hours of the swimming pool, what do we consider night swimming? Anything after dark. So we typically will say, if with your signage, if you have it as dawn to dusk, it kind of incorporates that change in the time period. But if you're wanting to use your swimming pool in the middle of the winter at eight o'clock, you would need a night swimming permit for that. Um, it, it, it really fluctuates. It's based on when the when the sun sets. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. Hey, Katie. I did have someone have a question. If we have pools that open April first is the first day we can do those inspections april 1st yes but can, we can call ahead of time like to set that up obviously yeah the, well the inspector assignment list will be like mid-march so um if you know it's an april 1st inspection just make sure you're reaching out to your inspector to get on their schedule as soon as this, the the list goes up awesome thank you yep Oh. All good questions. I think that's it, though, Tim. <laughs> All right. And, you know, just remind you that if you're, you know, swapping something out or changing something, you know, please get with us first. It's not that, you know, you're asking our permission. We just want you, we want to make sure that whatever you're planning to do is actually going to work with your pool and you won't have to do it twice or spend twice as much money. Um, you know, all of this is make everything easier for all of us so that's you know whether it's a phone call an email or an infield plan review just making sure you don't have to do something twice it'll save all our time um Roman, did you have another question or yes i do uh can you hear me then yes sir oh okay um katie said uh about the annual inspection if if for example if i'm in a good uh standing condition uh, I didn't understand. Um, she says something. Uh, I still require inspection. Yes. Yes. So, you know, if we come out and just do your regular annual pool inspection, you know, this week and you're on mm -hmm. a status, we'll just go ahead and when the time comes, renew your permit automatically um, without having to have another inspection. But if uh, you haven't, you know, if you haven't gotten your inspection, you need to make sure that happens before you want to open so that we can make sure you're in good standing and get your permit to you. And that's yeah, only for annual pools. It's a funny thing because I get your inspector uh, like uh, just before the meeting. Gotcha. Well, <laughs> and I, I sent him away. And you're good to go. No, I, I sent him away. Because <laughs> anyway, uh, I have to call him. All right. I do have a follow up too, and I just wanted to let you guys know, and I forgot to, I failed to mention this when we were going through the infill plan review stuff. If you're changing a pump out uh, and you 
need you don't have a lot of the information because there is a lot of information on those infield plan review applications. We may or may not have the original stuff from your original plan approval. So if you're if you're searching for information and you're trying to find information for the infield plan review application, reach out to Chris or I. We may be able to get into the system and tell you right off the bat how many pool gallons you have, what you were built with, with piping size, all of that. Um, it just some of these pools we have it for and some we don't. Uh, so if you need additional information, feel free to reach out to us and we'll try to get you as much as we can to help you fill those out. Um, I have one more question, if that's okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, okay. Um, so I think that my the people I work with are kind of on the fence about like redoing the entire pool right now. Um, and so if they were to do that and say it went past like you know when i would usually schedule with my inspector um in like you know the typical beginning of the season would i still reach out to the same inspector that i was assigned to um to inspect it once i did that and then also obviously i'd have to make changes to the pdsc form so for I guess this is a two part question. So for when I submit my PDSC forms, just submit what I have now. And then once those changes are made, um, do I just submit a second uh, new one to you guys before the inspection? Yes, so your application and your fee Make sure you're getting that in, regardless of what you're doing for your swimming pool right now. You can submit your application and your fee now. Um, we want that so you don't okay. have to pay the late fee. So, and then okay. if you, your PDSC form, if nothing's changed in the, from the past, we don't need a new form. The only time we only need it, we need a new form submitted is if you're making changes for this upcoming, like if it's already been changed. So your pump, your drain covers, your equalizers have changed, um, or if they will be changing, then that's when you'll need to submit a new form. Okay, cool. And that's fine to submit that after the fact because they definitely will have to change out. Like if they're going to drain the whole thing, put new plaster down, all that, they're going to, you know, change right. out the, um, yeah, all the, all the covers. And I think they might even consider changing the pump out and all of that, which I'll probably be emailing you about to make sure that this time they get it right because they didn't the first time. But, um, yeah <laughs> um so that so that's fine to would you recommend then just um like having the inspect i like i don't know what their timeline is like but like you know what i would do is if stuff. once you figure out when what what scope of work it is like i said you can reach out to me and we, directly and we can kind of talk through what the best case scenario is for you and particularly at your swimming pool and how the best way to okay. be able to schedule that with your inspector will be okay all right i appreciate that thank you no problem All right. Speak now or send us an email later, one or the other. So <laughs> we're here to help. All right. Well, if that's it, we will close our doors for the afternoon. Um, please, you know, let us know what you need. We're here to help, believe it or not. So if there's nothing else. We will sign off and say thank you and Hope all goes smoothly. Thank Appreciate you, Appreciate everyone attending. Thank you, Hope. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. All right. Y'all have a great afternoon. Thanks. You too.